Good morning friends. In today's video, we will try to clear your all doubts about TCP IP. And many students are bothered about TCP IP. So for them, the video is very useful. So what is TCP IP actually it is? So let's start with what is actually TCP IP. The TCP IP is mainly contains the source port and the destination port. And 30 bit, 32 bit sequence number. 32 bit acknowledgement number and the header line. It also contains the six reserved flags. It basically contains URG stands for urgent flag, ACK stands for acknowledgement flag, PSH stands for push flag, RST stands for reset flag, SYN stands for scene flag, and FIN stands for finish flag. Along with these six flags, it also contains the 16 bit window size, 16 bit TCP checksum. 16 bit urgent pointer so let's begin with the tcp ip so before moving to the brief explanation of all this field we should know that in which osi layer the tcp is below so in in the osi layer there is basically a application layer transport layer network layer data link layer and physical layer so among these all these osi layer the TCP IP is present in a transport layer. So the TCP is we know that the TCP is belong to the transport layer. So now let's start. Let's discuss the TCP header format in brief. So at the beginning of this video, in the definition of TCP header, I already told you that it consists of source port, destination port, sequence number, acknowledgement number, data offset, result. And it may also mainly contain the six flags naming urgent flag, acknowledgement flag, push flag, reset flag, scene flag, and fin finish flag. And along with this, in this flag, it also contains the window, checksum, urgent pointer, option, padding, and data. So let's discuss all this field of the TCP header in brief. So first of all, we are going to see the source port and the destination port. So we know that both source port and the destination ports are 16-bit field. So source port is basically used to send application to the, to another server, and the destination port is used to receive an application from the user. So this is the main difference between the source port and the destination port. Now in the sequence number. So for a sequence number, the symbol, uh, the flag is seen. That is S Y L. So in while in sequence number, there is a two possibilities. Either the scene flag is set to one, or the scene flag is set to zero. So I will tell you that what actually happen when the scene flag is set to one, and what happen if the scene scene flag is set to zero. So when scene flag is set to one, then this is the initial sequence number, the sequence number of the actual first data byte and the sequence number in the corresponding acknowledgement are then this is the sequence number plus one. So for under, for the sake of understanding of this statement in brief, I show you the concept of when sync flag is set to one in this diagram. So consider there will be a two host naming host, respective host A and host B. Suppose host A is sending a request with the signal with the sequence number X. So when for replying for when the host B reply to the host A that the your request is successfully received, then it send acknowledgement number is equals to its initial sequence number plus one. So this is the process when scene flag is set to one. Or in the rest of the case, when scene flag is set to zero, then this is the accumulated sequence number of the first data byte of this segment for the current session. So basically, the sequence number it consists of 32 bit. So the sender message use sequence number for ordering packets. So now moving forward, there is a uh, next is acknowledgement number flag so in acknowledgement flag when acknowledgement flag is set then the value of this field in the next sequence number that the sequence number is expecting the first sak sent by each end acknowledge the other end's initial sequence number itself but no data 
So in an acknowledgement number is basically a 32 bit white field which identifies the next byte of the data that the connection expects to receive from the data stream. Suppose in the same we are taking the same example of host and host B, host B respectively. When the host is sending the same request to host B, and again host is sending the single request plus acknowledgement request to host B. So at the last A will send the acknowledgement number to host B. So basically the acknowledgement number is the uh, is set when both sender and receiver use acknowledgement number field to identify whether the packet received or expected to be sent so this is the main purpose of using acknowledgement number so after acknowledgement number there is another uh, the, there is data offset so the data offset this field gets its name from the fact that it also the offset from the start of the TCP segment to the actual data. The TCP data offset is a 4 byte and it specifies the size of the TCP header in a 32 bit world. Basically what exactly the data offset is that it contains the size of the TCP header in a multiple of 4 bits. It also contains the if the sequence number is not provided used for a sequence. This flag is also used for a sequence and at the last it represents exact data value. So this is all about the data offset in the TCP head. After data offset there is a result field. In the result it is used as its name itself suggests result. So for future use it is used and in the most of the cases it should be set to zero. After this, the, we are going towards the flags. So there are total six types of flags in the TCP header and are as follows. Urgent flag, push flag, sin flag, acknowledgement flag, reset flag and finish flag. So let's discuss all about these flags one by one. So first one is a urgent flag. So urgent flag tells the receiver that the data to be sent is urgent data or some part of the data is to be sent here using URG urgent that is urgent pointer now that is urgent pointer now the next is a ACK that is acknowledgement so the acknowledgement tells the receiver that the acknowledgement number field contains a valid acknowledgement number and in acknowledgement there is a there will be a two-way handshake so what actually the two-way handshake it is that you are that we are going to tell in the latter part of this video and then the push flag the push flag is tells the receiver that the immediately send data to be uh, immediately send data to the destination application ask to push the buffer data to the receiving application so then the reset so if any error occurs in the transmission of the data then reset all current establishment so after reset flag there is a scene flag so scene flag we have already discussed discussed so now let's let's move. if you still want to know the scene flag you can see this diagram and understand next one is a pin flag so pin flag tells the receiver that the sender has finished his sending data and the la and this is the last packet from the sender so so to disc to know to, uh, to understand this pin flag i explain uh, this pin flag in the diagram format so here the sender is sent a pin request with x to the receiver so receiver is again send a request with acknowledgement number is the pin request number of sender plus one that your request has been successfully received and it sends this acknowledgement to the to the sender again so after receiving this so the send, then sender again the receiver again send a finish finish pin message that your message has been successfully received so after receiving the request from sender the receiver again send the acknowledgement acknowledgement is equals to the pin number of the sender plus one that the your message is also successfully received to me and this is the last packet sent from me that this is the end of the transaction end of the so after pin flag 
the all flags and explanation of all flags is over now apart from this flag now next forward so there is a window size so in a simple way the what is the window size actually it is so window size is basically used to tell whether the required space is available or not to the receiver side to avoid the conjunction and the retransmission then checksum so checksum in, a, in also in a simple way the checksum is a method is mathematically used to check whether the packet is received or not to the destination end so it is done at both source end as well as destination end so this is all about the window size and the checksum so the urgent pointer the urgent pointer is set when it points to the last byte of the urgent data in the TCP data area. Then the optional field. So optional field is set or it is used for some non-mandatory field which are sometimes used in the transaction. So the optional field is something the optional which is not mandatory field and it is sometimes used only. Then the padding. So padding is a TCP header. It used to ensure that the TCP header ends and data begins begins on a boundary. So padding is composed of zeros. So, so this is all about the brief, brief explanation of TCP header format. Hope you have understand TCP header format completely. So I think that this is sufficient for today's lecture. So thank you for watching.